So when it comes to the reading community, there's this massive fallacy and fallacy just basically means a very common error where everyone basically thinks that if you read a book and you don't remember everything you read, it basically means you wasted your time. But what I've learned from reading well over 200 plus books and reading a book basically almost every single week for I don't even know how long and earning the master badge on Audible or whatever it is, I've learned something very valuable. First, a lot of original ideas in books, they're not original. There are no original ideas. Every single book usually just has one or two, maybe max, three very good memorable ideas. But for the most part, third here, most things in books are really just not worth remembering. And what I mean is basically when you read a book, the goal should not be, I wanna remember everything from top to bottom. It should really just mean, I really just wanna grasp this concept and really comprehend it. But what I noticed is a lot of authors, they use a lot of stories involving their books to help you understand what they're talking about, but it doesn't mean you have to remember everything to actually grasp the overall concept. So I really wanna correct that, but in this video, I'm gonna give you exactly my technique so I'm able to actually remember the things I read. Because one thing you don't wanna be is like the person that reads a book and then they don't even know what they read. I remember when I first started reading, I would grab a book, I would read it, read the first page and be like, I literally don't know what I just read. Like I could not remember whatsoever what I read and it was just so annoying and I would fall asleep all the time. But with these techniques, I basically can always stay tip top shape when I'm actually reading and I'm able to read for like around four and a half hours without stopping, just basically getting things done and it works, okay? This system works. Now, as always, guys, like this video on top of also subscribe, hit the bell shit notified, and let's get started. Now, the very first thing, guys, I really wanna correct something. When it comes to reading, a lot of people make a lot of mistakes. The very first mistake is, when I first started reading, I did this, okay? I wanted to be able to read as fast as possible because I always felt like I was such a slow reader and I wanted to be like the person that would grab a book, turn the page and be like, turn the page and be like, oh my gosh, like he just read that page right there. Like that's crazy. I'm not like that, okay? I'm a very slow reader. So speed reading for me would be a mistake. And I've noticed something. A lot of speed readers, basically people that basically are able to read a book very quickly and they scrub things through and so on. And by the way, I've practiced I took a course on speed reading and it just does not work for me. Here's what happens. I read an entire book like this with over 800 pages, for example. And I, by the way, I read this book already, the sixth edition, this is the second edition. So I read the sixth edition. I remember it very well. I'm reading this one. I'm almost done with it. But overall, I would read a book like this. And if you asked me what the book was about, I would tell you, well, this book is about stocks. <laughs> and, then, and that would be all I would be able to tell you. I wouldn't be able to tell you any facts. Oh, it tells me about the income statement, the financial statements, what to look out for. And look out for this, look up, like, if you asked me about this book, I could give you so many details, but that's only because of technical know today, but whenever you're trying to focus on getting through something and not understanding it, it's just not worth it. What is all the rush for? Just enjoy the read. The goal should be that the more you read, the more capable you become of being a more fast reader per se, but you don't want to get to the point where you're just going through a book, then you just know what the subject was about, but you don't really understand it. That's just stupid. You don't want to do that. Now, the second mistake people basically make is basically reading a book from beginning to end. I had the same problem. I felt that whenever I picked up a book, I had to read the book exactly like the author designed it. So that basically obviously means from beginning to end. Today, I don't do that because the minute I buy the book, it's my book and I do whatever I want with it, all right? And here's the thing, a lot of books, they have certain types of things here and there in categories that you're mostly interested in and you actually wanna find out about. So when I read this book for the very first time, I went through it like the author prescribed, beginning to end. Now I'm reading it for the second time, I'm starting with the end because that's what I'm mostly interested in and I know how this whole thing works, okay? So remember, Whenever you're reading a book, unless it's like a story, obviously, like history, you don't want to start at the end. That's just like 
like spoiler alert, right? But you, you, can, you can start wherever you want, all right? You can start at the chapter that's mostly interesting to you, the one that solves your problem right away. You don't have to wait until you get all the way through it. No, the book is yours. You do whatever you want with it. That helps me out a lot, by the way. And number three is, big mistake is, people just read. You don't want to just read. Just reading just basically means I grab the book, I start reading it, um, I'm done, Okay, boom, okay? Nothing really sticks to your brain as much as it probably could if you do these four things. First of all, you read it, which is very important. You write the thoughts that come to your mind the most, like what mostly interested you. So by the way, as I read, I always have like a little notebook next to me that I'm taking notes on certain subjects and certain things just so I can really understand and grasp the subject. On top of that, once I'm done reading, I go ahead and I practice what I basically learned. That helps it stick even more. And then I take it even a step further. I try to teach it to somebody else. And if you do all those things you read, you write things down, you practice it, you try to teach it. What happens is this very amazing process because whenever you read something, it's like the first level. When you write things down, you're trying to put it down into your own words. When you practice it, you're actually applying it, but when you're teaching it, you're trying to simplify it. And in order to simplify it, you need to really understand it. That's helped me out a ton. And I'm so grateful to God because I have a, like a platform here on YouTube and I'm able to grab these subjects I basically learn and then teach it to you guys in a very simple way. And that's what helped me become a lot smarter than I am today. To teach is something that just changes you forever, like for sure, for sure. So here are some of the techniques that I use to help me read a lot more, a lot better, and remember things. First of all, my concentration was terrible. And I thought I was just not good, maybe I had a problem mentally, but in reality, it was just basically something you build up over time. Concentration is something you build up over time. And one big thing I realized that my biggest enemy was this little device, my phone. So whenever I'm reading, this thing right here is on airplane mode. So I might have it next to me, but that's because I wanna use it for a calculator because a lot of the stuff I basically do involves like mathematics and so on. Not really for the most part, but it does involve some numbers here and there. So I like having a calculator right on hand, but I don't get distracted. And it's because that basically interrupts Flow. And Flow was a book written by, um, what's this guy's name? Chris Chekmihai, right? I think that's his name. He has a very weird name. And I always remember his last name, Chekmihai high something like that um, but he talks about flow is when you enter this mental gateway in a sense where you're able to just focus on something so hard that you don't even realize time is passing but whenever you interrupt that process guess what it takes you 17 to 20 minutes to actually get back into it so I was trying not to get distracted by not having any distractions so for me the best technique has been the Pom Pomodorian technique which basically means for the first 25 minutes that you're basically working that's all you do just work focus on the task and then you take short breaks like five minutes break so you're on for 25 you're off for five minutes for me personally I do 30 minutes on five minutes off after three sessions I take a 10 minute break for a lot of folks out there they do the standard policy of 25 minutes on five minutes off after four sessions 15 minute breaks but again you want to customize things to the way it works for you. I figured out this works best for me, and that's why I do it. And whenever I'm reading, I'm doing that for nine sessions. So after nine sessions of doing 30 minutes on, five minutes off, 10 minute break after three sessions or whatever, I'm basically reading for like around four and a half hours. But I realize this again, whenever I read, I write things down and I practice, but I don't try to teach it or I don't try to practice it, things just escape me. So you have to have all four of those things in combination all at once, all the time, to make sure you actually understand what you actually read and you actually remember it. Now, if you're reading, you have to read as if you're actually studying. Now, I know people that they start reading something and you ask them, what does that word mean? or what did you get by this example? And they're like, I don't know, I just read it. Like, no, you have to read something, and when you don't understand something, you have to go out there and search it, whether it's in the dictionary, whether it's online. If I ever encounter a problem, for example, whenever I'm reading a lot of balance sheet issues, or how to calculate the book value of a company, or the intrinsic value of a company, or this in finance with the opportunity, whatever it is I'm reading, okay? If I find it to be very complex, and I'm just reading it, but I don't understand it, I pause. I take my time and I just basically say, okay, let's try to figure this out. And I might reread that page like five, 10 times just until I actually get it. I'm able to practice it and teach it. And that's when I know, okay, I got it, it's locked in. But reading is not about getting to the end. Reading is about understanding. And that's the whole goal. Cause if it was all about the people that read the most, 
would be the most smart ones, then, you know, that would be like all the people that loves novels would probably be like the smartest people in the world, right? But it's not true. So you got to understand what you're actually reading. Now, number three is you, um, you have to reread things, okay? So one thing I realized is when I first started learning about like money and reading and like all this self-help stuff, I would try to get through as many books as possible, but I realized that, again, a lot of books just say the exact same things in different ways. There are no original ideas. So sometimes the best thing you can do is just reread the same books. I, I've learned to reread a book 10 times, five times, seven times, and just keep reading it over and over again, because sometimes it's better to reread a very good book 10 times and get it inside of your head, inside of your core, than it is to read 10 different books and just confuse yourself, okay? So the book I read the most right now, I'm trying to read the most right now, was probably Security Analysis because it's all about like stocks and valuation. The second book is actually the Bible. Um, I love the Bible. So that's what I'm mostly reading, but I'm not always reading like some different book, different book, different book because it confuses you, you know, with all these different ideas, different opinions, it's better just to get a very good book, read it a lot of times until you basically grasp it. And if you want to do another book, you can do it too. But I realized that's what works best for me. Now, the last thing is guys, okay, when it comes to reading, how many books should you try to read? Um, the answer is, first of all, self-help books are great books. They change the way you think, they help you, they give you techniques when it comes to optimizing your day, optimizing your goals, but at the end of the day, if you read three self-help books, you basically just read them all because a lot of them, all they contain is different stories, okay? Now, this basically means my favorite self-help books um, when it comes to habits is Atomic Habits. When it comes to, um, oh, man, there's a few of them, but Atomic Habit is by far one of the best if I just had to pick one. When it comes to business or lifestyle advice, it would probably be the four hour work week. When it comes to investing, it would probably be um, Ramit Sethi, um, I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Um, there's a lot of great books out there and you gotta read a lot of them obviously to get through them and understand which one's good or which is bad. But when you do read a lot, you figure out that a lot of books just say the same things. And that's why I tell you like a lot of books just have one or two, three great ideas because for the most part, they're just sharing their stories and a lot of things you probably heard before, but that one to two, three good ideas are definitely worth the hours you put in because it could change your entire life for the better. Then on top of that, when you have application books, which is basically books to help you apply a certain knowledge. So for me, it would be stock valuation books. I try to read just three great books on that. So my three great books on finance and money are basically you have The Intelligent Investor, you have, for example, Uncommon Profits, Common Stocks by Philip J. Fisher. And then lastly, you have Security Analyst or The Intelligent Investor. Just those three books, that's basically what I'm reading over and over again, because again, the basics are usually solid, and with that, you can basically start creating everything else. And lastly, when it comes to fiction books, I used to not read them at all because I thought it was a waste of time, but great stories will do so much for you. So one of the best books that I've read so far, obviously, has been The Alchemist. It's not a real book, it's based on fiction, but that book has changed my life forever, and it's fiction, okay? It's a very small read, it's a very good read, and overall, it has so many good points in there that I read it like three, four times now, and it's just, every time I read it, I hear something different in it, and it just helps me. But overall, guys, I guess the overall point of this video is that whenever you read something, you're not gonna remember everything. But if you do things correctly, you will understand and actually complete the task that you set out when you were actually reading that book or whatever it is you were reading, okay? Whether it was a paper, um, a research, whatever it is, okay? Overall, the overall goal should be to understand, to, to remember everything is just a waste of time. You would just be like a walking encyclopedia and what's the point of that? And by the way, a lot of people out there can tell you information of what they read, but they have no actual way to prove to you they actually understand it. I could tell you, okay, if you're going to calculate the intrinsic value of a company, you might want to look at the cash flow statement and you want to discount what the free cash flow rate is over the next 10 years and calculate terminal value. And that's just fancy words. But then can I actually do it when it comes to going down into the financial statements and making the adjustments and so on to make sure I'm actually restating everything correctly? The answer is probably not, not yet, right? So you have to be careful because the goal is not to be able to verbalize things, the goal is to actually have a good understanding of what you actually read, okay? So remember that. As always guys though, thanks for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, do me a favor, okay? 
comment down below your favorite book of all time because I might want to read it and I might do a book review on it because I do book reviews like every Sundays, I think it is. So comment down below and let me know. Up here is another video. And by the way, if you're wondering, Tommy, how long will it take you to get through a book like this? It's like 800 pages. The answer is I average it out, right? So I spend like on this book, I'm talking about like four and a half hours, um, three days out of the week. So times three. That's around like 13 and a half hours. Um, in those three days, I get through like around um, 60 pages per day. So that's like around 180 pages. So you're looking at around 180, well, 800 divided by 180 pages. So it would be like around four weeks to a month. But if I wanted to get through even faster, I would just do the weekends also. But during the weekend, I'm reading the Bible, I'm reading different books. And during the days when I'm at the gym, I'm reading, for example, also different books. So it's like, this is like a workbook I read during work times. But during the day, I'm always reading some different book and so on. You don't, it's 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 like you want to have fun while you do this whole thing, okay? That's that's at least the way I want to do it because to me, life is about longevity. So I know if that's all I read, I'll probably get very bored. But whenever I look forward to, oh, let me read um, the Bible and study this on the weekends and let me read this fictional books in the morning or whatever or like this book right here, I mean, that just gets me excited and makes me look forward to my day. And it also makes me look forward to when I actually get the chance to read this and practice and so on. Um, but I have been making a mistake, honestly, which is I've been going through four and a half hours of reading this. And once I'm done, I basically just put it away. And that's not good because I read it, I write things down, I take notes and I kind of practice while I'm taking notes. But I'm not teaching it and I'm not actually like physically practicing it like by actually looking for the things I need to do to actually work out the problems. And that's actually been affecting me. So one thing I will do is after the four and a half hours, which I'm <laughs> immensely tired because it's a lot of work, honestly. Um, but I'm probably going to set up on like an like at least like another like 30 to an hour or maybe like an hour and a half to like think about what I read and then just go ahead and practice everything. So just put in extra work if you want results. That's what it costs. And I'm willing to put in the work, so I'll do it. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell so you notified. Up here is another video. Over oh, here's my face, please subscribe. And as always, long-term team officially out. And I have videos on the top five books, top 10 books. Look them up on the channel and you'll have some fun watching those too. All right, peace out.